an insight into the role that our company is playing in this regard on this continent. I'm going to start by looking backwards, taking you on a brief history of Thompson's and our involvement in tourism in Africa. I'd then like to fast forward to the present and share with you what we are doing in Africa today, some of the initiatives that we are taking to grow our presence up to, in, into the north, uh, specifically focusing um, on how we are packaging Africa as a destination. And then finally, I'd like to take a look into the future and share with you a few thoughts of the challenges and the opportunities which face us as we strive to increase tourism and the connectivity in Africa. When Thompson's International Tour Operators opened its doors in the, early seven, in the late 70s, our focus was largely on selling group tours to Europe, skiing trips to Austria, and holidays to Greece and Mauritius. Those were the aspirational destinations of the time. And quite frankly, they were some of the few destinations that were available for travel to South Africa, to South African tourists um, because of the sanctions that were imposed during at that time. Um, our first venture into Africa happened in the early 80s, mid 80s, when, when we, uh, we sent package, open package holidays to Zimbabwe as it settled down into its newly found independence. We soon added Malawi and Botswana, and the South Africans flocked there in their droves. Anything new for us was a treat, as we were so starved of options during that time of political isolation in our country. As the world welcomed South Africa back into the global community, we immediately began building an inbound tour product to South Africa and we took this to the international trade shows around the world. Nelson Mandela's South Africa was the new and warmly welcomed destination of choice for the world's sophisticated long-haul traveler. And Thompson's inbound strategy complemented our outbound focus at the time and served to balance the uncertainties of the exchange rate during those unpredictable times in our country's history. We were very uh, successful at attracting customers at the time as our brand was already fairly well established. They were heady days, days with lots of risk, lots of learning, and lots of fun. Now almost 20 years on, can you believe it? I can't. <laughs> we have built an experienced inbound operation that is the African partner of choice for many of the international tour operators that Andre, in fact, was just earlier referring to. As I stand here today, I can tell you that the Thompson's Travel Group has, uh, certified, has identified Africa as being central to our long-term strategy. This is perhaps best reflected by the fact that we repositioned our brand in 2004, changing it from Thompson's South Africa to Thompson's Africa. Today, Thompson's Africa is represented in a number of Southern African countries with established partnerships in Zimbabwe, Zambia, and Botswana. These partners serve as our exclusive ground handlers, ensuring Thompson's clients are given consistently high standards of service and support, as well as value for money options throughout the re sub-region. We are also in talks with potential partners in Nigeria, with a view to establish our brand in that country. On a recent visit there, my chairman and I hosted a cocktail party for the travel trade, and we were encouraged by the warm and enthusiastic response that we had to our visit, and pleasantly surprised that our brand and trustworthy product was already known in that country. For the past five years, we have had a dedicated sales manager for Africa who covers Kenya, Tanzania, Malawi, Zambia, Nigeria, and Ghana, promoting both inbound and outbound travel with these countries. Our strategy for Africa is built on our strong relationships with the tourism industry on the continent and with South African Airways, Kenya and Airlines, and South African Tourism, all with whom we work very closely. 
Um, I believe that we are well positioned to make a strong contribution to the growth of tourism in Africa. And one of the reasons uh, for, my, for my confidence in this regard is that we are well connected with the international tourist industry. Our connections in the tourism world range from east to west. In the east, Thompson's Africa has partnerships and fr franchises in Tokyo, Osaka and Singapore. And we are opening up in China using our relationship with the Travel Corporation of which we are part in order to do this. <coughs> On the west, we are recognized by the US tourism industry, tourism industry as the go-to people for all tourism matters in Southern Africa, directly behind South African Airways, who are, by the way, the strongest brand in the tourism world when promoting South Africa. But why do I tell you this? Thompson's acts as an important gateway for visitors to Southern Africa and as we grow our network of contacts in Africa, we can serve as a valuable uh, facilitator of tourism to the continent as a whole. To this end, Thompson act Thompson's actively markets Africa both to our South African customers as well as to our international customers. There's a, quite a symbiotic relationship here. Furthermore, Thompson's Africa is enthusiastically involved in a number of important collaborative initiatives. The two most notable examples would be the Transfrontier Peace Parks, which are market, marketed under the label Boundless Southern Africa, and the organization Leadership for Conservation in Africa. I'm sure many of you will be aware of Boundless, the union of nine Southern African countries which have created seven Transfrontier conservation areas for the sake of sustainable conservation, tourism and economic development. We are proud to be associated with Boundless South Africa, Southern Africa and promote establishments that form part of these transfrontier conservation areas. We are also one of the patrons of the LCA, a wonderful initiative supported by 17 sub-Saharan African countries, which aims to bring business and conservation together in the interests of socio-economic development in Africa. Our dealings with Africa to date have revealed that African travel agencies are starved of product knowledge on tourism products available on the continent, and they definitely need to be shown the quality, the concept of quality and value. And this is where we come in, as quality and value is part of the Thomson's DNA. We at Thomson's are still relatively small in the context of connection with the whole of Africa, but we are establishing a solid base of relationships from which to grow our links and broaden our contribution to the growth of tourism on the continent. I've been asked to comment on how we are packaging Africa and to reflect on some of the lessons we have learned from our early endeavors. To begin with, I think we need to distinguish between the internal and the external target markets and that is selling South, Afri South African destinations to the traditional, sophisticated, international, long-haul traveler, and selling, South South selling African destinations to Africans. In selling Africa to the traditional international traveler, our approach has been based on the same successful but predictable formula that we have used in selling South Africa. We offer a rich variety of value-added packages which fo focus on iconic tourist attractions spanning wildlife and scenery, beaches and cultural, political or human interest locations. It's quite a privilege to be able to sell such a feast of attractions. From the ever-appealing Table Mountain to the plains of the Serengeti, from the spectacular Victoria Falls to the Masai Mara, from Itoshapan and the Okavango Delta to the gorillas of East Africa and from the beaches of Zanzibar to the footsteps of Nelson Mandela on Robben Island, the list goes on. We truly have a wonderful array of products to share with the world. Of course, as any marketeer knows, you have to understand the needs and the preferences of your different target markets. We therefore try to create 
a reasonably diverse menu, which may appeal to a, vi a, a variety of palates and a variety of pockets as well. But besides iconic landmarks, our continent also offers the opportunity to sell experiences, the new buzzword. In essence, the soul of Africa. Our international visitors often value the simple warmth, friendliness, hospitality, and colorfulness of the African people. And they leave having experienced something of a returning to oneself. Life-changing is a term often used by our visitors. This is an important part of our continent's unique selling proposition, and we need to be mindful of incorporating this into the essence of our international uh, visitors' experience. There are some distinct differences between our traditional visitors, the international visitors that is, and the African visitors to South Africa.